You're gonna die. Capricorn, you're gonna die. Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact. And it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. Today we're jumping back into r slash neckbeard stories, tales of neckbeards. I don't know what we're doing. We're doing casino beard. That's what we're doing. We're going to wrap this saga up today. I've been wrapping up plenty of sagas. I posted a compilation for the Creepy Cali saga yesterday, and people seem to be pretty excited for that one hour plus video. I'll probably wait about a month before the Casino Beard compilation goes up, just because that seems to be the best way to do it. <laughs> if I upload the full compilation right alongside this video, then the views seem to suffer just a bit and it doesn't get pushed out by YouTube as much. I guess that's too much explaining, but if you do want to see the previous parts, they are in the description as always. So, let us brace ourselves, <laughs> say a little prayer, Get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, of course, and then we will dive right into some Casino Beard Cringe. Dope. Stock my Finsta and follow my car. Okay. Cool. This is fine. <laughs> Everything is fine. Not really. Part six-ish of Casino Beard. Hello, friends. I have finally returned with part number six of the Casino Beard Saga. Sorry it's been taking like a week to get around to writing these, but I do have a decently busy life. Full-time job and trade school and pets and a workout slash 5k schedule and a boyfriend and, you know, life stuff. Damn, that schedule's so packed. Makes me feel like I'm doing nothing. My stuff is like YouTube, workout, <laughs> play with kids, and uh, that's about it lately. And I'm still like, oh, I don't know when I'm going to have time to. If if this OP can do it, then, then I can do it. But yeah, I apologize for the delays. I've been condensing this story and only really telling the big doozies and leaving out all the little times that he just said something stupid. So hopefully this is the semi-final. Maybe? It is. <laughs> Confirmed. Here are our characters for this tale of woe. OP, 18-year-old girl, first time working a proper night shift, have some dorky tattoos, look like a punk, not afraid to speak my mind. I also live my life online, so I got that Twitter, that Insta, that Facebook, and also an Insta page specifically for my pet rabbit, which is relevant. Casino Beard, CB for short. 30-something tall, fat grease ball of a human with no regard for boundaries. Can't believe a girl likes video games. And also doesn't want him to touch her. Lamau, what? Chad, 20-something tall as heck, Chad-looking dude, is quite aware of Casino Beard's antics and is slowly becoming my work husband. So this story is a bit of a peculiar one. Mr. Rogers, my shift supervisor, had been doing an amazing job since the cafeteria incident of last story, which was about a month ago, and he made sure that Casino Beard and I were nowhere near each other and made sure that we had separate breaks. But I would see him every now and again, and he would go out of his way to say some of the dumbest shit. <laughs> Whatever, not as bad as him following me at work, I guess. To summarize the last story quite briefly, Casino Beard brought on his creepy crap while Mr. Rogers was off taking a dump on our break. <laughs> All I wanted to do was eat my mozzarella sticks. <laughs> Damn, I could go for some mozzarella sticks too, man. I got a hankering. <laughs> so, as I have made painfully obvious, yeah, I work a night shift at this casino. So that meant about midnight to 8 a.m. Something worth noting about this casino is that it has absolutely no windows, unless you're near an entrance or an exit, and no clocks at all. That is how most casinos are laid out, I found, and OP will explain why. <laughs> this creates the illusion of an absence of time and the outside world, and therefore it really fucked with me when I went into work and it was dark as hell, and then when I would leave work, it's sunrise. Night shift is never easy, man. I sat in a gas station doing night shifts. I think I talked about that briefly. And I would watch the sunrise through the little window, and it still screwed with me. And that was when I was young. <laughs> now I think I'm way too old for night shifts. 
even though I do make most of my YouTube videos at night. <laughs> but it's a personal choice. It's different when you're forced to. Anyways, to say that I was having a hard time adjusting is generous. It was so strange because at the time, I was training for athletic events. So I'd go home, take a short nap, then deal with my fur children, and then work out for four hours, and then nap again, and then work. How does that happen? OP is like the bionic woman or something. <laughs> I mostly did 5K or 10K races for anyone who cares. And in general, I was trying to help treat a joint disorder, but yeah, that's a whole nother can of worms. Now, this was my routine, and I don't know about you, but I'm not neurotypical, so I damn near have a stroke if my routine is vastly interrupted. You need to give me like three to five days notice if you want to interrupt my day. I mean, I do feel that pretty hard, but <laughs> life rarely works this way. Anyways, like in a previous story, I was in bed with my dog, checking my Instagram and all that. My main account was I. Nothing new, just silently judging everyone else's life choices because I'm insecure about mine. <laughs> uh, sounds like being 18. Man, when you're a teenager, you're the coolest thing on the planet. <laughs> then you hit 30 and you're like, oh god, has everything before this been a lie? <laughs> No, you were just wrong. It's simple. <laughs> then I switched over to my rabbit's Instagram account. I have two rabbits. One is just small and white with blue eyes and is perfect. So to prevent my main account from being overrun with photos of her, I made a separate one. Mostly for friends who actually want to see her and my family who adore her. Those are about the only followers. And as you could have predicted, Guess whomst the fuck would have followed the account? <laughs> uh, it was, of course, our lovely friend, Casino Beard. Bro, these neck beards, man, they're good at stalking through the internet. You get a job in IT, you'll be set for life. Instead, he wants to be like the creepiest security guard ever for some reason. Probably because there's no expectations about what needs to get done. It's basically just wheeling around ships and standing there intimidating people that might have robbed the casino. Honestly, I don't think anybody's dumb enough to rob a casino, actually. It's got to be like a pretty plush gig, you know? <laughs> Maybe I'm going to pick up that job. If it were for the hours and like, you know, showing up somewhere that I don't want to be and staying there for eight hours. <laughs> I can't ever go back to a regular job, man. Don't fail me now, YouTube. Anyways, I digress, as usual. I swear to God, Casino Beard's profile pic looked like an old-ass MySpace angle with his greasy hair in his face and, of course, a fedora. <laughs> Classic. Though in the last story where he followed one of my accounts, I had an issue with him looking at photos of my dog on there. The first thing on the front of my mind was, he doesn't deserve to see the perfection that is my son. And then the generic fear of your work stalker making things personal. Now, if you haven't been following the story closely, I have. <laughs> I'd recently realized that Casino Beard is basically just a sack fag of shit. But I firmly do believe that he has the ability and potentially the intent to hurt me. So I had, and still have, a slight fear of him hurting me or the like. Forcing himself on me, perhaps. Yeah, I digress. The account for my Aryan rabbit was public also, and he commented on one of the older posts. And it just sounded like something that a serial killer would say. <laughs> she looks so helpless, heart. Excuse me, but what the actual fuck? <laughs> now that fear of him hurting me stabbed me in the heart and twisted into a fear of him hurting the only things that mattered to me. Hell to the no. I wasn't shaking or anything, but you know when you're about to cry, and your eyes are extra moist, and the back of your throat starts to clench and hurt? It was that feeling, just utter helplessness. I deleted the comment and blocked him from that profile too. I got up and scooped my bun bun off the floor where she was sleeping and just held her for a while. I was way too hyped for first nap. I went on about my day as usual, but I was still being tugged at by such an uncomfortable feeling. I had told my mom, who I live with, 
that a coworker was stalking me, and I showed her a screenshot of the inappropriate comment. If I can find it, I'll post it, but after I quit, I did erase all physical evidence of his debauchery. She was understanding, and everyone in the house to this day makes sure that the house is always locked and replaced all the windows with safety glass that sounds like a gunshot when it's broken. We resorted to a security system near the end, but yeah, that's for another story. Fast forward a bit. It is now 11 p.m. Well, we skipped all the train and the stuff. All right, I'm with you. <laughs> I took the back roads to get to work because my car was utter crap. It basically wouldn't go above 50 miles per hour or go uphill without losing speed. I had crashed my car into a bus. <laughs> Not my fault. So the front end looked like a nightmare. What I'm trying to say is that my car was very, very easily identifiable. Wait, not your fault, but you crashed it into a bus? I, I, I don't know where to go with this, man. <laughs> if it's not your fault, then, like, shouldn't insurance cover it or something like that? I remember crashing my first car. Hood was all crumpled up. I only had to deal with that for about a week. And then insurance was like, hey, here's some money. <laughs> like, all right. Awesome. So yeah, that, that statement seems a little weird to me, but whatever, we moving on. I can't dwell for too long. <laughs> I'm putting on my jacket and sharing the last of my dinner with my dog. She legit only wakes up to eat whatever I don't and then passes back out in front of the radiator. <laughs> Life of a dog. I open my front door to be blasted in the face by New England winter cold in the middle of the night. Oof. My car sputtered as I started it. One of the headlights refused to turn on, but eventually started blinking into existence. <laughs> I took the back route that goes basically directly from my house to the road leading towards the casino, but it was about 35 minutes as opposed to a quick 15 minutes on the highway that my car would basically be unable to make. Bro, you good. Just stay in the far right lane. <laughs> 50 miles an hour? Just pretend you're an old lady. Get like a gray wig or something. <laughs> Save 20 minutes every day for one gray wig? That's quite an investment. <laughs> now, imagine it. It's the backwoods of fucking New England at 11.10 p.m. at night. It's like 3 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's a weekday. So you would think that the roads would be relatively empty, right? Yeah, I wish. I drove down a massive hill that takes you through a smaller town and then to the empty woods that the road goes through. Someone was behind me. Two little headlights attached to a white car. They looked like they were going really fast. Like, this is a residential area, so the speed limit was 35. But this motherfucker was whipping it down this icy-ass freaking hill. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta die. I was secretly hoping that they would rear-end me so I could sue and also not have to go to work. <laughs> uh, I've been there, but dreams never come true. Aw, that's sad. It was a double yellow line. This dude passed me and flung down the road. Okay, man, you do you. I just want to go and make some money. After five minutes, I'm at a stoplight near a gas station. The light turns green and my car starts to chug forwards. Someone whips out of the gas station and has his brights on. Guess where this asshole just has to be? Like maybe three inches behind my rear bumper. <sighs> Whatever. Just a jackass with somewhere important to be at 11.15 p.m. So go ahead, pass me, bitch. <laughs> but he didn't. The whole ride, I was maintaining maybe a solid 40 miles per hour, but this dude was right behind me. We get to a broken yellow line, but they're still just there. Okay, whatever. I was maybe two miles from the nearest town, and it would be suburbs and small city road for the rest of the drive. Maybe they just, like, really like to look at the back of my head. Oh, he does. <laughs> This is like bad vibes all around, bro. In the middle of the woods being tailgated by a neckbeard? Ugh, what a nightmare. We finally make it to where there are just an ass load of houses, and I was hoping that this dude would turn off onto one of the side streets, but nah, he's riding right up my ass with his brights on. 
Well, what better time to do a brake check than now? <laughs> I tapped my brakes a couple of times in the town, slowing back down, and this bitch honked at me. Well, y'all should know me enough by now that I rolled the window down and let the bird fall victim to the fucking freezing dry air. And then he starts flashing his lights. Oh god. It was the same car as before. The one that was speeding down the hill. Well, with his lights flashing, I could vaguely make out a head the size of a manhole cover. With the same reflective golden shine on his chest that my name tag has. He followed me. From basically my house. And now he's following me to work. Yeah, dude, this story is starting to get like really real. I hate it. This is also the night that my car was pushed to its limits. I slammed the gas, and my car hissed and screamed at me, but eventually, I was going faster. I know these roads by heart, so I was easily whipping around corners and shit, and his car was struggling to keep up. But why was he trying to keep up? I finally made it to the parking lot. I pulled into the public lot that was basically an overflow lot for casino patrons. I parked my car as close to the crosswalk as I could. My blood was boiling. I was going to shit myself <laughs> in anger. <laughs> That's a good tactic. That'll make people stay away real good. <laughs> Casino Beard parks just a row behind me and jumps out of his car screaming. Why are you driving like such a fucking psychopath? He was screaming. Why was your ass following me from home, you big dumb dumb? <laughs> I'm not gonna say the R word. Sorry for the slur, but like, I was in the moment. But you could have picked a better word for the dramatic reenactment. Come on, OP. <laughs> the employee center thing was right across the street. People were standing outside waiting for the shuttle, and three of them took off in a run over to us. Why does it fucking matter? You could have gotten me killed! He was screaming. His normally gross, spongy voice was bellowing like a lion with severe brain damage. <laughs> you were the prick with your lights on right behind me. Chad and two others showed up. What the hell's going on here? One of them tried to scream over both of us. I was borderline in tears. Chad grabbed my arm and basically had to fireman carry me to the employment office area. Casino Beard was still over there, screaming. I was going insane. He followed me from my house. And he has the nerve to try and gaslight me, saying that it was my fault? Worth noting, I found out that this guy lives maybe 10 miles in the other direction from the casino. So he actively went out of his way to find me. It is impossible for this to be a coincidence. Ugh. Goosebumps. I hate it. We made it into the office. Chad sat me down on one of the chairs, but I was going insane. Screaming about how he had followed me and that I was quitting. One of the other guys inside had called tribal police. While I was going off, apparently Casino Beard and the other two guys were stopped by tribal police and brought to the main casino for questioning. One of these guys was aware of Casino Beard's generally creepy antics and said that Casino Beard was trying to run me off the road. I mean, yeah, that's close enough to the truth, isn't it? <laughs> An officer walked into the office where I was still busy just completely losing my shit. They attempted to calm me down, but it ended with me throwing my name tag and badge on the floor and screaming, I quit! And another officer had to come and help me calm down. I eventually relaxed a little bit. During the drive Chad and I had to the main casino where the tribal police station was, I refused to be within a hundred feet of Casino Beard, so we had to use an empty conference room for my interrogation. I'm gonna drastically shorten what happened here to just save us all some time. I told the police about his weird comment on my Insta and some of his past behavior, and even they agreed, much like a lot of you, that Casino Beard should have been fired, or at least reprimanded. <laughs> I believe then, and I do still firmly believe, that if we work the day shift, Casino Beard would have been fired already. 
Night Shift just doesn't care. I told them everything about my car ride, and then I was told via radio what Casino Beard's story was. Basically, I was driving like a maniac and wouldn't let him pass me on the road, literally suggesting my piece of shit car could have kept up with his car going uphill. Okay, seems accurate. But I doubt the police would know that, right? And figuring it out would require some of that, what's it called? Police work. Nah, nah. <laughs> we just take these two stories, compare and contrast. The truth is somewhere in the middle. <laughs> my mom ended up having to pick me up. I was in hysterics and my car wouldn't start. It had to be towed and scrapped and I blame him for all of this. If he hadn't chased me, my car wouldn't have broken down completely. And you guys will never guess what happened. Well, because I quit, the fucking upper level management people in the security department didn't do a goddamn thing to Casino Beard. He went back to work that very night. Ugh, such a nightmare, dude. I've heard of bad workplaces, but this is just abysmal. I had my mom bring a change of clothes so I could immediately return my uniform. It took me that long to quit, but I did it, finally. And that's the end. Lamau bet. <laughs> nope, this asshole just couldn't seem to leave me alone. I went home and was hysterically crying. My mom said tomorrow we were going down to the police station to file a restraining order, but that didn't make me feel all that much better. So I did what every self-respecting teenager does that night. I smoked a bunch of weed, <laughs> called up my best guy friend and cried and made him spend the night. Now, there is the last final bit. I'm sure a lot of you will love the ending, but to answer some questions, he never does get fired. The final will probably be really long, so expect it in about a week. I love y'all. Peace, my dudes. Edit for grammar and whatever. Also, I just want to say thanks for coming along on this journey with me. I appreciate every view and every comment and trying to answer questions, so feel free to ask on this or any previous posts. I do have an epilogue prepared to say how my life is now, how Chad is doing, and also, of course, an update on Casino Beard. And I'm thinking that once this is over, maybe every now and then, I'll post some other stories about Casino Beard that I just didn't think were groundbreaking enough to include in any of these longer posts. Let me know if that's something that you'd like. Also, PM me from my rabbit's Instagram if you want, Lamau. <laughs> I'm good on the rabbit's Instagram. I got an Instagram, I think, somewhere around here, but I don't use that shit. <laughs> but yeah, Casino Beard has consistently proven himself to be complete trash just with the way that he talks and treats OP, but this is definitely taking it to a whole nother level. You know what I mean? Who knows what he actually had planned? Definitely a terrifying situation. OP put herself into danger by, like, accelerating her car down the icy roads and crap like that. Like, this could have ended so much worse than it did. I'm glad that it was only the car that died, to be quite honest with you. I mean, if Casino Beard skidded off the road into a ditch, I, I probably wouldn't feel too bad for him. I don't want him to die, though. Just, just severe injury. <laughs> That's fine. But I guess we'll see what happens with Casino Beard and OP as we get into the last part of the story. The end of the line for Casino Beard. Part done of the Casino Beard saga. What's up, dudes? It's your boy. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> I'm back to finish it. I promise I will include my reasons for why I haven't posted in like a week at the end. So this is it. The final part of Casino Beard, my borderline stalker ex-co-worker who turned towards sexual assault to get my sweet ass. <laughs> uh, consider this your trigger warning. Uh-oh. I'll include another when it gets to it, but it's not anything too intense. Well, that's a relief at least. <laughs> I thought this could have gone like the Wheezy Beard way, and I don't know if I'm ready for that today. Whew. So our players are OP... 18 year old girl, first time quitting a job without putting in a two weeks notice. Apparently I'm neckbeard bait. <laughs> Casino beard. We don't need to spend any more time on this piece of trash than we already have. And then we've got mom. Des, uh, OP's mom. <laughs> I live with her. She likes me a lot. Enough said. 
I mean, I hope she likes you. You came out of a body, for God's sake. <laughs> fake dad is my mom's boyfriend, a gun-toting army vet. Damn, fake dad, though? That's some shade. <laughs> if he makes your mom happy, like, that should be enough. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to get too hung up on it again. We last left off on me crying because Casino Beard followed me from my house to work. Driving recklessly in the middle of fucking winter and then tried to blame the entire situation on me. I quit on the spot and my car also died that night. Rip Miranda, my 2005 Chrysler minivan. Now, I don't want to go into great detail because I've filed this whole incident under traumatic events in my brain folder, so I don't even remember half of it. Mostly, I had to give a statement, and my mom had to bring me home, and I cried. A lot. You ever cry so hard your lipstick comes off? I haven't. <laughs> it was one of those nights. Ugh. That next morning, my mom has a security system installed. We took down his social media shit and made sure that everyone close to me blocked him on as many platforms as they could. Even my brother, who I haven't spoken to in like five years, blocked Casino Beard. Police and detectives were around my house and stuff, asking even more questions, and they increased patrol in my neighborhood for the next month, meaning that every three minutes a cop would drive by, day and night. God damn, New England got the budget for that? <laughs> That's wild. From what contact I had with my now ex-boss and the security department, Casino Beard was suspended without pay. Oh, well, that's something. I thought he went back to work and stuff. Now, I guess the trigger warning starts here. Remember, I'm telling the bare bones of this story because I have forgotten slash repressed slash refused to acknowledge most of the details. Not three days after I had quit, he came to my house. What? Straight up pulled into my driveway like he belonged here and knocked on the door. Dude's got like a set of brass balls or a walnut brain. <laughs> Possibly both. My dogs were going insane. It was like 4 a.m. I was still awake thanks to my ruined sleep schedule. I opened the door casually, assuming that maybe my brother, who also worked weird night hours, forgot the code to our house or the key. It was him. In that moment, I was scared shitless, but... For the sake of the story, I'll try and be more funny about it. His grotesque body was in the exact same clothes from when he had crashed a smaller get-together at a sports bar. Gross sweatpants, gross t-shirt, sweat stains everywhere, minus the fedora, but his hair was down, revealing how horribly thinning it was and how truly greasy it was. It gleamed in my porch light. Looking at his hair was like when pirates look at a treasure chest full of gold. <laughs> uh, just so shiny. Borderline wet. Do you know how long you need to not shower to have your hair get that greasy? God damn. <laughs> he didn't say anything. He just pushed the door open further and stepped inside. Oh my god. The shock of seeing him passed, so I did the only natural thing. I screamed like hell and kicked him where the sun don't shine. <laughs> uh, proper OP. He bent down a little in recoil, but I could see in his eyes that he was not here to fuck around. I was able to slip around him while he doubled over in that split second, but he shot right back up. I imagine this is how everyone in the book Frankenstein felt when the monster appeared in front of them. I backed up towards my couch and grabbed the nearest thing, a lamp. What is it with girls always hitting home invaders with lamps? <laughs> well, I'll tell you why. It is effective. Especially if you have a glass or easily breakable lamp. Well, there went the stained glass lamp that we got from my grandfather after he passed. I'm sure your grandfather will rest easy knowing that he helped defend you, at least in some way. So don't sweat that. The lamp shattered into like eight big ass pieces when I slammed it across his head. Get him OP! Destroy him now! <laughs> I could already see a few lines of red peeking out of his nasty fucking skin. I bet I popped a few pimples in the process of hitting him, so in a way, I was helping. 
you're also teaching him not to commit sexual assault, which is also helping. <laughs> this is too much. Uh, because I had already opened the door, the security alarm didn't go off. But luckily, my mom had heard me scream and had already called 911. Immediately after I hit him with the lamp, he was up again. All I could see in his eyes was pure rage. He had the same look as my snake when he was ready to strike. He had pushed me against the couch, placing his fucking ogre hands, no offense Shrek, on my crotch and one on my boob. Jesus. He immediately went for the nipple ring and pulled at it fucking hard. I swear to God he was about to pull it through. <sighs> you weren't kidding, were you? He said. Now at the time, I was fucking petrified. But in hindsight, he sounded like one of those super emo dudes on YouTube who tries to talk in a super low, spooky voice. But it just sounds childish and weird. But at the time, I just wanted his hands off of me. Thank God people had woken up. Bang! Drywall fell on top of Casino Beard's head. He let go of me immediately and turned around but ended up sticking his nose in the barrel of a shotgun. Fake Dad was on the other end of it. Oh my god, Fake Dad for reals! Thank God. He's a real one, man. <laughs> Thank you, Lucky Stars, for that, man. Whew, I don't remember much of the rest. Police came very quickly because they were already in the neighborhood, and he was arrested on charges of sexual assault, trespassing, and something else. It might have been a charge related to stalking, and also disturbing the peace. There was a lot of drywall damage. <laughs> Fake Dad had shot an almost two-foot hole in the ceiling right above where Casino Beard had me. My parents had a lawyer involved immediately, and we had a temporary restraining order in place within the next few hours. Again, police came, took statements from us all, took pictures of the damage, and assessed said damages. Halfway through the police being involved, I tapped out and went to cry in the shower. For anyone wondering, my nipple's fine now, but they took my shirt for evidence because there was a nice stream of blood running down the only white shirt that I own, or owned. I had a nice collection of bruises on my boob as well because of his grip. Jesus, man, what a monster. In the following days, we spoke to the lawyer and got a permanent restraining order in place, so he's not allowed within three feet of me or my family and can't contact me or my family in any way, shape, or form. That being said, to make everything easier, I do not go to the casino for the graveyard shift, which uh, isn't that hard to do, honestly. <laughs> now the real question that everybody generally has, why didn't you sue? Basically, because it wouldn't be worth the money and the trouble. The casino wouldn't settle because there was no proof that he created an unsafe work environment. We did get a settlement from the court system for his charges for coming into my home. Legally, I don't think I'm allowed to talk about the court proceedings because there was, in fact, a money settlement. Some of that money went towards lawyer fees. The rest ended up going towards medical bills a few months later. But back to the casino suing shenanigans. My lawyer pointed out that it would be a long case and that whatever money I would win would probably go to lawyer fees and... I also lived in a state where monetary payments as settlements are taxed. Yep. If you get raped and get a $10,000 settlement in my state, that gets taxed. Like 20%. Ugh. And I hate my state representatives, so I partially didn't sue because I didn't want them to take my money. Assholes. <laughs> Even if I did win, after everything was said and done, I'd end up with like $3,000 at the most. Plus, I'd have to miss work and school for court dates, and ugh, I was just ready to fucking move on. Where are they now? Well, Casino Beard was bailed out. By who? I don't know. His suspension at the casino was lifted, and he went back to work, where he still works to this day, as far as I know. Jesus Christ. How? How? What? That is wild. It's a fire and ice casino in New England, and I will never be visiting because of their treatment of OP, and this scumbag is still working there? What? 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 I can't anymore. <sighs> At least Chad is doing fine. 
He now works at a different job in the casino that pays more and has better hours. No, Chad and I never dated, but we are still good friends. I'm a little worse for the wear. After the whole incident, my migraine issue got way worse, so I've been on medication and shit for that. I also have another chronic illness that involved joint pain and stuff, so I haven't been doing as many races as I would like to. And that also makes it harder to type and all that jazz. It's kind of similar to arthritis. And it's also hard to look at a screen without getting a headache, hence why I post so irregularly. I've been in and out of hospitals for all of that, but whatever, I'm a big kid, <laughs> I can deal. I'm going to school for phlebotomy, and I've been working as a CNA again, what I did before the casino, and I hate it. <laughs> uh, my rabbits are good, and in general, I don't know, life is fine, it's all fine. I have a boyfriend now who buys me Wendy's and sushi, and I spend a lot of time on Reddit. <laughs> Thank you for following my trials and tribulations. In the future, I'll post little stories that I didn't think were important enough or relevant enough for the main plot of Casino Beard. Live long and prosper, brothers. Another thing to note is this whole time I commented on the shitty quality of his skin or his weight. Here's the thing. I wouldn't have commented on it if he wasn't actively trying to stalk or attack me. If you're large with acne skin and whatever else, I'm sure you're a lovely person. But if you try to screw with me, I will shit into your soul. I don't give a damn. <laughs> OP? More like OG. <laughs> oh, Jesus, man. That was a heavy ending. I know that OP said it wouldn't get too intense, and it was broken up a little bit by her jokes and stuff, but man, this is a traumatic event, like in every way. I really hope that you're able to get into therapy at some point for this OP because this is definitely the kind of thing that will stick with you and needs to get sorted out in one way or another. I'm super grateful for fake dad. I don't know why you call him fake dad. That's a real dad move, okay? Protecting what is, I suppose, your stepdaughter. And I guess it's good that he didn't like shoot casino beard in the head or something like that. <laughs> that requires some massive restraint on his part like i said previously i don't want to see the dude dead but i would like to see him in prison you know what i mean i don't know how he didn't end up going to prison op said like he's a first-time offender had to register as a sex offender and pay him some money and stuff but i don't care get him in jail this dude is like out just walking around after the horror that he put upon op Ugh, that's despicable justice system my foot <laughs> god damn man I, I just can't believe that that is such a jagged pill to swallow and just be like okay i guess i guess he's out there walking around somewhere oh terrifying i didn't think this was gonna go the wheezy beard route but it most definitely did not all the way but fucking close enough for me oh i'm so sorry that happened to op but hopefully it was cathartic for you to get this all written and out there. And I hope two years later you are doing better than you were when this was all posted. It definitely serves as a good reminder. Like we always say on this channel, neck beards, they're so doofy. You like to laugh at them. They're like big, fat, silly clowns. But then something like this happens. You know, they essentially act like a cornered animal, don't see any other way to get the thing that they want and have probably been obsessing over and... Oh, God, it ends up going this way. And it's so unfortunate. Like, why can't we just drag these people out and give them that old yellow treatment? You know, that Lenny from Mice and Men, just one behind the ear. Story's done. Wrap it. It is so scary to think that this guy is still out there. I don't know how many times I said that, but Jesus, I will not be going to any New England casinos anytime soon. <sighs> I hope you guys will let me know what you thought in the comments. I hope that you'll also like, comment, and or subscribe on the video if you haven't already. We've also got a bunch of links in the description. Check them out at your leisure. Those links do include my social media if you're trying to get in contact with me. A little bit of that Twitter, Discord, Facebook. Oh, and my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons. I'd like to thank them all, but especially... Robert Waits, TSM Kirby, Teddy the Police, Aaron W, That Big Delicious Jelly Donut, Candy Sora, Fire Drake, Livison, Silent Revolver, Zathras, Zero MMX, Little Lone Wolf, Vanilla Mel, Rouse Dower, Aaron Lennox, 
The OG James Cook, J.M. Coon, Jerry, John Hero, KK, Miss Monday, Mr. J, my boy Nat One Nick, Lady Nicks, Katekin, Sidestep, Cider Drinker, Serrated Ass, Siegfried, Staples Yeet, Synaptic Boomstick, Brilliant Tamago, Tato Ferret, That Duck and Bug, The One True Fusky, Redwind, Leon Embers, Naga Viper, John Indoors, A Roxers, Cake Jerry, That's a Different Jerry. <laughs> Mark 211, Organic Cam, Princess Rosalie, Ghosty, The Last Shinobi, and the Maestro, Zuka Cervantes. But that's not all. We got a new friend joining us today. Welcome to the fold, Fisher Diggy. This is a heavy one to come in on you guys, but um, I am glad to have you here supporting the channel for when things get demonetized. This video, mm, pushing the envelope. I'm, I'm not too sure what's going to happen with this one, but it is a story that needs to be told, so I will get it out there. If you guys would like to join these lovely people in supporting the channel monetarily, that is absolutely huge, massive. I thank you very, very much in advance, but if you can't right now, don't sweat it too hard, guys. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. Because really, the views is how my beard stays buttered. <laughs> in order to join us again, you'll need to keep yourself safe out there, for real. Wash your hands, but also carry some pepper spray. Do not answer the door without a bludgeoning object of some kind in your hand, especially at 4 a.m. What the hell? Ugh. Also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe consuming some more lighthearted Red X videos. Most of them are lighthearted. This is uh, a bit heavier than it should be, but props to OP for powering through. So... I hope that you guys will always remember that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I will see you in the next one. And until then, friends, bye-bye.